If you start with a community, and you make money faster. Creating a community is so much easier than most people think. You need five things. Uh, number one. I can say from personal experience that if you do that, that is going to be a billion dollar brand. What is fascinating to me is that what stops people from creating communities is that they think it's as hard as social media. <laughs> is actually the biggest myth when you bring people together around a common purpose, an interest, passion, a goal, and you charge for it, $370 million of creator earnings this year on Mighty. Wow. What's an example of a business that you've seen reach another level of scale because of the community that they formed, right? Where they actually took their customers and networked them together into a community or really emphasized that side of it and went much further because of it. Um, <clears throat> this business called Hello7 <laughs> did that. <laughs> There. It is. It's true. No, but I think your story is an amazing one. <laughs> well, yes. I mean, we, we went from, we had a mastermind, right? Which I think masterminds and memberships are the exact same thing. Literally, they're the same. It's just the price you charge and how many people are in it, right? So like masterminds have less people, you charge more. It's a little bit more, it's more intimate. Um, and then you have larger communities where you charge less. And so we went from having a mastermind and because of COVID, we came up with doing a membership instead and that blew up our business. So we went from 2 million to 5 million and then 5 million to 10 million and continue to grow beyond that from focusing a, on community. So that's our superpower. I, in I my think opinion. the other thing that happens, and I, I, I think it happened for you guys too is when you have a community, and I would even go as far as, as to say start with a community, you also learn what your community wants. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you have a built-in 24-7 focus group about what to build next and what people want from not just you, but from the purpose that you represent and the purpose that you have brought people together to navigate, to you know, go through together, to achieve results and transformation together. And so you know, I, I think there's any number, we have a number of them on Mighty Networks, um, but I, you know, one that I love is Mary Heffernan and what she's done with uh, five Mar now Five Mary's Ranch. So it started as her posting on Instagram about her family's farm where they raised and sold beef and pork. Uh, and then what she realized is in bringing this community together, it certainly started first with, with building an audience, but she realized very quickly that there were family farms and ranches all over the United States that were doing something very similar to her, which was she was the marketer, she was the brand builder, she was the person that was actually selling their family's products, and her husband and children, and she were working the ranch, and then she started 5M Entrepreneurs to essentially bring, not just teach, but bring people together to do the same thing. Then, she started Ranch School, which was basically to teach kids all over the, the country about life on a ranch and like how to actually do stuff, which did she did during COVID. And then she launched cookbooks and now is launching homewares, all because she didn't stop at having an audience. She looked for ways to bring really sort of her supers together, her super consumers or super members, the, the people that were looking and, and looking even more closely. And one of the things I think is so important in just that example, and I think what you've done as well, Rachel, is when you want to build a community, the faster it moves from being about you mm -hmm. to being about them, and that the identity is about what your members want to get. Again, so that everybody has something to talk about. Like, again, if we just come back to tonight, you, you, we're all here for a reason. 
We're all here because Nathan and Rachel have put together a really amazing, I, I'm seeing nodding, like point of view on, wait a second, there is a specific framework for a creator to go from, hey, it's about me and my audience to, wait a second, I have the opportunity to have an even bigger impact on the world around me in the way that I wanna have an impact on the world around me if I can bring people together and say, this is an identity. And this is a way, this is the way in our community and in our culture, we are going to interact with each other. And this is how we're gonna help each other. This is how we're gonna show up. These are the things that we do. And, and you know, one of my favorite things in the world is when people recognize that one of the worst things that we do for community, one of, one of the simplest way to fail at community it's real simple. When somebody shows up, have community guidelines, which basically make everybody feel like a potential murderer. <laughs> so it, it is, to me, when I think about it through this, this lens, it is the craziest thing to think about the fact that when most people show up at community and you don't know, like, you don't know what the vibe is, you don't know what the culture is, it's even harder to kind of figure some of these things out in digital communities. And then there's the community guidelines, which are don't be horrible. Don't be a horrible person. <laughs> Show up, you're here, and I'm really glad you're here, but it's gonna be really important that you're not horrible. And then you know the next question people ask me? Why doesn't my community have any engagement? Right, because you've scared them out of it. You have scared <laughs> them out of it. I think it depends on the community, though, because we have very strong guidelines <laughs> in the club. But, but you also have a culture that says, this is why we're here. Yes, exactly. And this is how we interact with each other. And I think that's actually, most people lead with the guidelines. Yes. For most communities where it's not clear what the culture is or clear what the purpose is, that is the problem. Yes, if you want your business to do better, build a community brand instead of a personal brand, right? Like, we're all taught, like, that's why you say you a lot in your copywriting, right? You're talking about the person and you're trying to apply it to them. And when you have a community and you make it all about the community and you ask the community, what do you want? And then you go build that thing and give it to them, right? Then you're creating that, that two-way relationship and people will be obsessed with the community brand, not you. And that is infinitely better, right? People get so much more out of it and then they get to create it. I think one thing in that is who is the hero of the story? Yes, right? exactly. And something that you did before uh, the stop in Austin, you were up in New York doing a brand photo shoot. And most of the photo shoot was your community members, right? Like the, the banner on your website if I understand, does it even have you in it? No, I'm not in the photo. And that, like, that's very purposeful. Like something we do at ConvertKit is we want to make the, our, our customers, make creators the heroes of the brand. And so there's people here like Kimberly Brooks, uh, Kay He is here, where you can go on our site and watch documentaries about them telling their stories. And that's very, very important. Like it's much harder to build a community when you're constantly saying, look at me, look at me. You know, oh, you don't need to meet each other, right? Like, pay attention to me. But if instead you're making those connections and saying, this person is amazing, let me tell their story. Have you met her? Have you, you know, learned about what he had to go through to, you know, accomplish his dreams, right? That is so, so powerful. If you've ever read uh, Joseph Campbell's The Hero's Journey, right? You're trying to, you're not trying to be the hero. You're trying to be the guide. That, you're not Luke Skywalker, you're Yoda, right? And that's where it really makes a big, big difference. This is why I'm always harping on testimonials, like get the testimonials, get the case studies from your customers, and then tell those stories constantly. You can start a community by telling your own story, then people are gonna relate to your story and they'll join your community, and those will be the early folks. But then after a while, your wins will come out of your community, stories will come out of your community, and then you start telling those stories instead of your own. Right, you wanna have that shift at some point so that now you're building a community brand and not just your personal brand. And yeah. that's an element of building a billion dollar creator business, right, is not just having a personal brand but really having a, a, a larger brand that serves your people. I, I talk about it as moving from hero to host. I like that. I like that too, because okay. that's what you call your Mighty Networks customers, right, hosts? 
Yeah. What do you, wording is very, very important. And I think sometimes we're just, we throw words out there because it was the version, that, you know, something that we heard someone else say, or it's the common thing. And I get the feeling that the word host is very deliberate. Like that did not happen by accident. Tell me more. Absolutely not. Because when you think about any community, especially, you know, we have communities on Mighty starting from scratch every day. And so for a community to start from scratch, you kind of need five things. But you need somebody to do those five things. <laughs> And, and really start, you know, start, start the, put the seeds in place. And that person is a host. And that's why, you know, from day one, whenever I saw someone new come into our company and want to refer to either the host or the members of a community on Mighty as a user, I was like, stop. There are no users on Mighty. There are hosts and there are members. And if you would like to change the name of member or host to instructor and student or workshop facilitator and workshop participants, you can. But we are not users. We are hosts and we are members. And that has permeated everything we do. I like that. I think, I think it's important to tell people more about your experience and why you're an expert on community. It's not just because you're the CEO of Mighty Network, right? You have some other experience as well. And so I call this the put some respect on it segment because um, I think it's important uh, to know people's backgrounds. So will you share a little bit about what you did before Mighty Network? Sure. So, uh, well, I'll start with the fact that I am absolutely obsessed with breaking down and building back up how do people come to community? How can you create a community from scratch? Creating a community from scratch is so much easier than most people think, than all people think, actually. And so, and my, my mission is to make it radically easier. Create communities that run themselves. So that's, that's just, and, and how I got here is back in um, the first wave of, uh, social networks and social networking companies, I founded a company called Ning, which gave people a way to create their own communities. And we built Ning um, to 100 million people around the world using it, 3 million Ning networks created, 300,000 active on a monthly basis. And then when we sold Ning, um, I wasn't done. I, in fact, I hadn't even really gotten started. Because the thing about community is that Technology is a great innovator in terms of what we can do and how we come together. And I know even like 15 years into social networks and social media and all of these things and we're lonelier than we've ever been and we're more anxious and we're depressed and here's what I know to be true. I believe that the next five years is going to be a renaissance in being able to discover the best in other people faster than at any other point in time, and to be able to bring the best of ourselves to rooms like this, to people both online and in real life. And I got here by being absolutely obsessed with this. So Ning, we reached a lot of people, Mighty, today, in fact, actually, this was something that I, I, I made my team look at because uh, I knew I was coming here. We have, speaking of making money, because <laughs> the other thing that you also didn't mention is people pay attention to what they pay for. Correct. People pay attention to what they pay for. So we have actually seen that when you are able to create a big purpose for your community and bring people together around a common purpose, an interest, a passion, a goal, a result, a lifestyle, and you charge for it, it's not just about making you money. It's actually about helping more people get results and transformation that they won't be able to get on their own. And so $370 million of creator earnings this year on Mighty. Wow. 
But every day, why, why is this growing so fast for us? It's because we start from a very different place, that it's not about starting with an audience. We actually believe that if you start with a community, not only can you make money faster, and because you're getting people results and transformation, not just from you, but you as the host and facilitating the connections and relationships between your members, guess what happens? People talk about it. They talk about it to their friends. They talk about it to the people they meet on the internet. They talk about it to people that they want to help, that they want to have an impact with. And so I would actually argue that if you want to build an audience, starting with community can accelerate the speed in which you can have more people come into your community, more people come into the results and transformation that you're able to generate. And really, a community is, on, on many respects, people talking about you when you're not in the room. Mm -hmm. And guess what happens? Like a brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. If you are able to help people make connections as a host, you are going to do a lot less work. You're going to help a lot more people. And you are going to watch something magically happen because <laughs> it's the stories, experiences, and ideas of the people that you've brought together. That's a very good point that community, like you can actually do that first before you build an audience, because that's actually what I did, which I've never thought about it that way. But when you said that, it made me think of that. Because one of the first things that I did was um, I would just join other people's community and I would like, I was a lawyer, so I would just make myself useful in the community. That was my goal. And so I joined people's Facebook groups where like there were a lot of entrepreneurs or small business owners. And then I would like search the group. And I, this was not a lot of time. I probably spent like two hours a week because I had little young kids and I was practicing law. So I was like writing contracts at midnight, you know, <laughs> mostly because I was procrastinating because I hated doing it. But <laughs> that's besides the point. Um, so I would go into these Facebook groups and I would literally search the term trademark, copyright, contracts attorney, legal, lawyer, right? So that I could find all the posts that were in the last week that were asking legal questions or within my expertise. And then I would just answer them and give them like free advice. And then they would say, you know, not all of them, but a lot of them would say, I'm, I, I need a lawyer to solve this problem for me. I want to hire you. And so I got a lot of my clients just by making myself useful in other people's communities. And then the next thing I did was create a free Facebook group, right? It was like a free community for me to to you know, engage with people. Um, so yeah, so like creating community can come first. Um, and it was you know, a way to sort of gather people and connect with people all the time. And I just found like sharing there in the community was a little bit easier than, you know, like I could share in the community every day, but it was harder to email every day. Or I could even share in the community three times a day, but I can't necessarily send three emails a day, right? <laughs> So it was a way to like, you know, just engage but with people. But you can with ConvertKit. <laughs> <laughs> send, send emails three times a week with ConvertKit and then post several times a day in Mighty Networks. I actually use both of these products, so. <laughs> that's, that's why we have you surrounded here. <laughs> so a lot of the listeners for the show are creators who have built really established audiences. It might be, uh, you know, on social or on email these platforms that are not inherently community focused, right? And so if I'm like, hypothetically, I've got 50,000 subscribers on Instagram and 20,000 on my newsletter, and I'm like, okay, what do I do in very practical terms to turn that into a community rather than just an audience? So one of the things, so I got an answer for you. Let me, let me preface this by saying, social media and writing is hard. What is fascinating to me is that what stops people from creating communities is that they think it's as hard as social media. <laughs> and so it, it actually, the biggest myth is that a community is as hard as another channel that you have to figure out. Because it's like, in a community, there's going to be some kind of you know, kabuki like <laughs> algorithm you got to figure out and you got to like 
you know, pray to the Facebook group gods and hope that they like don't do something different. And also there's gonna be some weirdo who shows up in your free Facebook group because Facebook's culture is drama. Drama. <laughs> Truly, like the algorithm. I was trying to find a nice way to say that. No, let's not find version. a nice way. <laughs> the algorithm, it, it's, it rewards drama. And, and I'll give you an example of this. So um, Yoga with Adrian uh, started a Facebook group. And started a Facebook group, uh, 35,000 members. And they were finding that on the topic of yoga, people were coming in, in their words, hot. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden. Oh, so like hot yoga? Not yeah. that kind of hot. <laughs> Sorry, yoga. I couldn't resist. Not that kind of hot. <laughs> so people were coming in, and, and, and in part it's because the way Facebook is set up, where a Facebook group, it's one post, so it's the most charged post is showing up next to your political views and your like friends' baby pictures and like somebody graduating from high school and somebody's wedding, but then another, you know, totally charged political issue. And so, 24 ads, don't forget the 24 ads. Oh, <laughs> 24 and 24 ads. And so what, they, they came to Mighty, created their own find what feels good, Kula, community app, whole sort of own world. And what they did is they started testing, posting a question or a challenge in both places. Fundamentally different answers. Fundamentally different connections. Fundamentally different ways that people showed up. And a lot of people don't believe, oh, by the way, happy ending, they moved and now they have over 230,000 members. Because again, what's the other myth? Well, I gotta go where people are. Mm -hmm. I gotta go where people are. I've nobody's, said that, I literally gonna, have said that. Yeah, like nobody's <laughs> gonna follow me to like my own app or my own community. And I am here to tell you, I have got the data behind me that says yes, they do. And in part, what is so beautiful about community is that you have the opportunity, any of us have the opportunity in 2023 and 2024 to say, I am going to host a community. I am going to create this kind of culture where I want my members to be able to show up for each other in these ways. You can, you can create your own culture that will in fact drive engagement because the software has gotten good enough and is only getting better from here in terms of being able to surface the most relevant members to each other. Mm. Break the ice. Bring people together for interesting challenges and collabs and workshops and everything in between. And so coming back to the question, okay, great, Gina, how do I do it? You need five things. Five things, super easy, easy peasy. Uh, number one, you need a big purpose. There has got to be a reason for your members to show up. And it's not to learn, share, and grow together. That's like peanuts, adult voice, nobody knows what that means, kind of like nobody knows what community means. So it is getting specific about who you're bringing together, what you're gonna do together, and what members are going to get for doing those things. So it's a, like you gotta answer the question, what's in it for me? Why would I show up? Well, number one, you wanna be really specific about who your community serves. Rachel, I think you do such a great job of this. And then what you're gonna do together. So okay, I can picture myself doing those things or I can picture other people doing those things, that's pretty cool, so that we can. What are people gonna be able to do as a result of being in your community? So that's number one. Number two, the best communities are about progress. So what are your, we talk about it as your, your year in the life, the year in the life of your community. And it starts with your members, which is what can your members do a year from now that they can't do today? And here's what's really fun about that as a brainstorm. First of all, it's just really fun. And then second of all, the, the next part of that is to say, well, wait a second. If my members a year from now can do that, 
what does that mean for me? And then you have this moment, wait, is this a, are we allowed to swear? You are absolutely allowed to swear. Then you can have this moment of like, holy shit. Not only am I having this incredible impact on people's lives, because they're going to be able to do all this cool stuff a year from now that they're not able to do today, but I'm going to be able to invest more in that. Because again, people pay attention to what they pay for. So now I've got this whole framework for how I'm going to be able to help more people. They're going to be able to help themselves. And I'm going to get the resources, not so I can go buy a Lamborghini, but so that I can invest to make more epic experiences for my members and myself. And it just starts to feel really good. I mean, it sort of starts to feel like a flywheel. I don't know. It kind of feels that way, right? Okay, so then we, we've got progress. We've got the year in the life. We got three simple things to execute from there. Monthly themes. Why monthly themes? Because people get bored. <laughs> and a monthly theme. It's so true. <laughs> people get bored. So a monthly theme is there to create novelty. And you can unveil it and it can be a Oh, we do a whole thing. Oh, you do a whole thing. <laughs> Because it's fun to do a whole thing. So monthly themes also give members another thing that they can go and talk about with each other because, again, you're building a culture. So monthly themes all then ladder up to that year in the life. What are your members able to do a year from now that they're not able to do today? Then what are you able to do a year from now that you're not able to do today? Again, laddering up to that big purpose. So monthly themes is there for novelty, a weekly calendar, is there for habit. Mm -hmm. So Tuesdays at 9 a.m., that's when we post our give ass day. So we'll, we'll have a member that we are going to profile, and it's going to be why are they awesome, what are they here to give other members of the community, and what is their one ask for the community. And that order, by the way, is really important. Or, you know, Thursdays at 4 p.m. is when we live stream. And we just we hop on. We talk about what is the question of the week or what is the topic of the week that probably ladders up to that monthly theme, which then ladders up to that year in life. You guys are, you guys are with, you're, you're getting it, right? Okay, so that's the weekly calendar. Here's the other benefit of a weekly calendar. Your work has a multiplier effect because if you do the same thing the same time every week, even if somebody doesn't come back into your community, they got that notification they got that email, and then what happens if you do this four weeks in a row? They kind of come to expect it. Mm -hmm. They kind of like it. And so even if, you, even if they might not be coming back, you're building your brand, and you're bringing them value, and you're doing it with less work. Last piece, daily actions, daily polls and questions. What's that there for? Polls and questions by far our most popular feature across all of the networks on Mighty. And the questions in the polls are there to help your members meet each other. So that's the, the connection. It's not to give advice to each other, it's for them to be able to share stories, experiences, ideas. Because here's the problem with advice. Advice shuts the, comp the, the conversation down. I mean, and some of it's bad. Some of it's bad, but, it's, but what's also... <laughs> I mean, let's be yeah. real. Sometimes I see it and I'm like, okay, I'm going to jump yeah. in. You're like... <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm going to jump in here because, yeah, no, 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 that's not and, what you should do. And this is the thing that, like, you know, if you, if, you, if you think about it, it's like in your relationships, we've all kind of had that moment where we got like really like, like amped up because we had too much caffeine, not speaking from <laughs> personal experience here. And it's like, oh my God, you should totally break up with them. And then they don't, and then it's kind of awkward, like afterwards, and you're like, oh, yeah. That's advice. But if you share your story or your experience or your ideas, you've got a whole different, it's a whole different ballgame. So those five things are it. You can literally put a community, once you get these things going, on autopilot. Because it's not about posting seven times a day and like being in every conversation. It's about, hey, we want to set this community up so that you're getting value from each other and I can go upstairs and go to bed. 
<laughs> and that is, that is fundamentally different than what like every major social media platform says about how to build an audience. Now again, you can add one other thing to that community um, that, you, that you're building that I love, and I think this is gonna be like 2024, like my theme for 2024, which is quests. Mm. Sending your members out on quests. Challenges, courses, experiences, and collabs. Especially because all that community designed those five things, they're gonna get easier and easier and easier and easier to do, um, at least on platforms like Mighty. Um, but hopefully I have enticed you a little bit with that to say that this is not another social media channel. This is not another place to talk out at an audience and maybe have them talk back at you, but this is why the power of the word host is fundamentally different. I was really tracking with everything that you were saying because I'm seeing a bunch of the mistakes that we've made in... <laughs> You've done none of that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm here to learn. Uh, both in running our own private community for ConvertKit and then also, you know, in the Facebook groups and all of that. And just without that intentional structure, without that flywheel, um, you, the community ends up going all these different directions. People are just there for support requests or, hey, I'm stuck with this problem in my business. They're not forming connections. There's all these other things. And so it's, on one hand, it's you know, simple or trivial to go through like, okay, do these five things. But I can say from personal experience that if you don't do that, then you absolutely don't have a community. You have a hot mess. And <laughs> like, it will actually cause problems for your business. Like It'll be bad for your brand. Yeah, and that, that's in a huge way. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be implementing some things differently after, uh, after Well, and, and here's, the, here's the good news. These were, you know, talk about just the, the like, I, I think coming back to our theme of the billion dollar creator. Mm -hmm. So I'll just share my story on, on getting community design. So I, so I had this front row seat both at Ning and at Mighty to see what worked and what didn't work in a time and a place where everything was manual. So literally, if you think about it, community has been manual. And when I say manual, it's like you show up and it's like tech, like you can text people. Or like a community platform, you know, in the olden days, it's like here's all the features we have. So like everybody's like, oh, okay. So it's like they have a wiki. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they have like comments and, and like threaded comments. And all of that, thing, so think about that just as, as, as manual. And so what I watched uh, was, well, what separated the people that made those manual features work and, and the rest of folks that like were just sort of like their communities were dead on arrival. And so that's kind of, a, you know, every, a lot of people think that their community is like really, they'll could show up and they'll be like, Gina, you've never seen the kind of community that I want to build. And I'm like, you're right, I've never seen it. It probably does this and this and this. They're like, as a matter of fact, it does. And so, <laughs> like, but there are patterns to community because people are social beings. And we're kind of predictable on a, a lot of fronts. So, watched it. Then I was like, oh, maybe I should use the course feature on Mighty that we just built. Because I thought you had to have like a PhD in courses, like online, because I'd, I'd meet all these people that like told us to like build courses into Mighty, and they would always show up and they'd be like, I have a PhD in like, like some kind of learning system thing. Behavioral design. Yeah, or... and they're like pedagogy. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna have to look that up after <laughs> this conversation. But like, you know, but I'd nod, I'd nod. I'm like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, pedagogy, okay, I got it, got it. And so I finally, I was like, okay, well, I should teach a course. So I'm like, I'll teach a course on community design. So I organized the course and I like run this course and I can't, like, it was awesome. I learned very quickly what worked, what didn't work, how to talk about these things, how not to talk about these things. And then what's beautiful is when you can create something that you can teach and has structure, guess what you get to go do? You can build software. Mm. 
and create repeatable, scalable digital experiences, which is what we've done at Mighty. So we're in the process now of bringing into Mighty a way for you to be able to set those five things up. We've got like two of them down. Yeah. We'll add the rest uh, in, in the next few months. So that you're starting not just with features, but with strategy. And once you have strategy and software and the ability to sort of set all this stuff up, so again, you're creating a community that runs itself, then you get to go do all the things you like to do. And that might be going upstairs and going to bed. Um, I, I, obviously, I'm not speaking from personal experience. That would not be something I would want to do at a party, never. Um, but it also might be because you love to write or you love to think about the kinds of epic experiences that you want to create, maybe today for your audience, but tomorrow for your community. And you get to go do all of those things because where the software is going, it is getting easier and easier and easier to be able to create something that people want to join, that they want to pay for, because again, people want results and transformation and they're willing to pay for it. And what happens when they pay for it? They pay attention to it. And then you have something that's self-organizing and you have something that you are learning from every single day and I believe as more and more creators do this, we are going to evolve into some really interesting collabs and really interesting ways for each and every one of us to define and achieve the life we want. The, the reason why we're talking about community is because we want you to be billion dollar creators. And we know that a community is a jumping off point to help you do that. Right, and we share on the podcast examples of people who have done this, taken their audience, their community, and who are engaged, who are willing to take action, right, to and you know buy their products or support their products or even fund a Kickstarter so that the product can even be created, right? That all of that, a billion, becoming a billion dollar creator is a lot easier if you have a community. So one example, Nathan, maybe you can tell this story, <laughs> um, is Joel Runyon. Right, we haven't shared his story yet on the podcast. Do you want to talk about him and how he went from community to products? Well, yes. Yeah. So Joel is someone that I've been friends with since I think 2012 or 2013. To give you an idea of what he does, the first event that I went to, I went to this conference called the World Domination Summit, which, by the way, is what, just what's the what was the goal of the conference? It's really hard to tell. Great, great question. I've been there and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not sure what it's about. Yeah. World Very, domination. Yeah, yeah. In some By form. the way, <laughs> when I went there for the first time, uh, it was 2012. I was going there for year two, and it's in Portland. And I, I didn't know anyone in the community, and I'm like, okay, I just have to show up and go with go with. That this. was my first time there, too. You know. Okay, and I did not know. Did you guys meet? meet? No. We, not, we oh did not God. meet. No, we met years later. Well, we talked online, and then we met in person at another event years later. So I fly into Portland. And I'm taking the MAX train into the city. And I knew that there's like a thousand people going to this conference all showing up at the same time. And so I'm like, surely I'm just going to run into people. But I didn't want to say hi. And someone had that like creator sort of vibe. And they started talking to me. And they're like, oh, what are you in town for? And I said, oh, the uh, World Domination Summit. Are you here for that as well? And they went, the World Dominatrix Summit? <laughs> 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 and like... <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, the, I guess you're not here for the same event. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> so anyway, at the World Domination Summit, which was uh, put on by Chris Gillibo, and it was really just about like living an amazing life and serving your community. Um, their theme was actually community, adventure, and service, right? It was their, their three um, you know, uh, themes for it. But Joel Runyon was there, I didn't go to this, but to give you an idea, he hosted a meetup for this, as many people did. But his meetup was everyone went bungee jumping. To give you an idea of what type of person Joel is. So Joel created this business called Impossible, and he owns the trademarks for it. If you ever wanna ask him about what it's like to be sued by a billion dollar company over trademarks, uh, he's been fighting that battle for years, and like more Whoa. power to him because uh, 
it's I like he's an amazing creator, and I love that he is fighting and defending his trademarks um, against like a giant food brand. But um, you'll never guess who I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> But so he's built this community around people <laughs> doing things that are said to be impossible. And so he has gone to run a marathon on every single continent, right? So he's run a marathon, or not, not a marathon, an ultra marathon on every continent. And so he's done that in uh, Antarctica, you know, and the other six continents. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but specifically... <laughs> wait, wait, wait to just summarize that. <laughs> That was a great Keeping summary. the story tight. <laughs> yeah. Very you know, good. It could have gotten out of hand. Um, <laughs> but so, like, a, a community of people doing things that they believe were impossible for a bigger purpose, right? So he, he ran seven ultra marathons on seven continents to build seven schools, to raise money to build seven schools with Pencils of Promise, right? And so he's going on this epic quest, and he's helping other people to do it. And so you'll see people wearing these shirts that say impossible, but there's a line through it. And uh, like I see this all the time on social media where he's built this brand and I think he's always been in search of what the product is for it. And sometimes you see people building a brand and you're like, I don't think that's going anywhere, right? The name isn't quite right or something just doesn't, or they're not thinking about it big enough. And what I love is that Joel has always been thinking about it really, really big from the beginning and it's kind of been this brand in search of the right product. Mm -hmm. And he was hanging out with us um, in Austin at our event, and it was just a great opportunity to catch up on what he's been doing. And so he's been building all of these, you know, now supplements and other products around doing big things, right? Like being a high performance athlete um, around, he has a, uh, a sleep product called Impossible Sleep, which is about, um, you know, it's a magnesium supplement and it's got, you know, all of those things that are going to help you sleep really well. But what I think is interesting is that he's taken it from digital products early on, you know, in this community. And then now he's focusing on these types of products that can scale really, really well. And then there's no reason that he, I, he can't build something that's absolutely massive. And so he's got a few of these early products that, you know, are now doing... I think low single digit millions in revenue. And I, it's just one of those brands that when I see it, I'm like, okay, that is going to be a billion dollar brand. And the biggest reason why, like the thing that I admire the most about Joel is he is absolutely relentless. <laughs> like how many people, when you come up with a perfect brand, you own the trademarks from it, you like lock down all of your IP. Uh, we give them a quick rant really quick as an IP lawyer on why they should <laughs> lock down their IP. It's very important. <laughs> Well, yes, because otherwise you will have to, you don't want uh, these large companies coming after you, right? Right. So protecting yourself, obviously, is what you need to do. And if you're going to build a whole brand, like imagine if I built this whole Hello 7 brand, never protected the trademark, and then somebody else builds a business with the same name, and then I have to prove that I was there first. If they register it first, they're going to get the registered trademark, and I'll, now I'm on... Uh, defense, defense, right, and I've got to fight them on it, and it's extremely expensive. It is way, way cheaper to just register the trademark, like spend the 2500 bucks, you know? If you think that's expensive, try a trademark lawsuit to find out how expensive that is. Yeah, so when I look at these attributes of what it's going to take to build, like to be a billion dollar creator and, and build a brand on that level, like I think the most important trait is just this resilience and, and perseverance like, to give you an idea, Joel owns the trademarks for Impossible. He is being sued by Impossible Foods, and he's been fighting a battle with them for years and years and years. And he is an individual creator. That's the thing about lawsuits, too. They take forever. Right. It's, it's been appealed and all of this stuff. Uh -huh. And he is absolutely going to win because he will not back down. And so then, like, this brand would be massive by now, except that he's been, like, defending what, what he had first. Time, money, energy. Yeah, and so... I just think he's got the ideal brand and this like absolutely unstoppable resilience. And so like seeing the combination of those things, like he's going to turn this into like Im impossible is going to be a brand way bigger than like on it or any of these other like health and fitness brands uh, because of the way he's going about it and because he's just never going to quit. And also because I gave him a great idea the other day. <laughs> <laughs> what, what'd you give him? What'd you give him? 
that part too, you were going to say that too, right, Nathan? No, uh, <laughs> but I was telling him around his sleep product, speaking of community, right? He has this physical product. I think you should add community to everything. Software, a physical product, anything, right? Like whatever you sell, you should add community around it. So he, he has this sleep product that like helps you sleep better and you have to like, um, I think you take it for like seven days or something before you start to see the impact. And so he, I was like, you should do a challenge, mm -hmm. right? Because he has this trial the pack. For seven. Yes, and he was like, I'm gonna send this trial pack and people can try it for seven days. And I was like, cool. Right? You're going to send it to them. They might try it once and be like, mm, that doesn't taste that great. Never mind. Right? Or maybe it tastes delicious. I don't know. But then they forget on the third day and they don't ever get the thing. So I'm like, it's much more likely that people will actually do it if you sell them a challenge instead of the product and include the product in the challenge. Right? So like sell them a $39 challenge where you know they have to show up every day for seven days, but in community. So now there's a whole bunch of people that are like, we about to get our sleep on, right, together. Um, they get this product in the mail just in time so that they can be in this challenge together. And then like maybe they're so-so participating, but on day three, all these people are like, oh my God, I had the best sleep of my life, right? If you're a middle-aged person, like if, <laughs> particularly if you're like 35 plus, sleep is, n there's nothing you brag about more than when you get, a good night's sleep, right? Like, if I get eight hours, if I wake up and I'm like, what? <laughs> Did I just sleep eight hours? I'm like, mom, guess what? <laughs> I slept eight hours. Robert, right, my best friend, guess what? Guess how much I slept, right? I'm like celebrating. <laughs> so they're gonna be celebrating in the group, and then the people who aren't participating are gonna be like, let me get this win too. I, I, I want eight hours of sleep, and then they'll start doing it. And all of the other stories of all the other people who are in the challenge are why you're going to remember to take it. Yes, exactly. And that's, I think, one of the most interesting things as well, and, and is that when you push yourself to build a community or build a challenge or like what's something, you have to actually, as part of it, again, have that big purpose, have that reason, why is someone gonna care? Mm -hmm. And your physical products get better and more meaningful and more memorable if they live in a community of why you should care. Yes. And so that bigger purpose of whether it's sleep, whether it's how are you living a possible from impossible life? Again, what are you able to do a year from now that you can't do today? What is that thing that is imp impossible in your life? It is, inc and I think this is what you're saying, Nathan, it's a powerful idea that then the physical product is an ingredient into that bigger purpose. Exactly, because no one cares like, this is what I tell my community all the time. No one gives a shit about what you're selling, okay? They don't care about your product. They don't care about your service. They don't care about your brand, right? They care about themselves. So how can you make it relevant for them? How can you make it matter for them? And I think, like, I want to join this challenge, so that's why I need Joel to create it. I mean, I sleep well, but I yeah, could sleep better, why, you know? <laughs> I, I love that. Because that, and, and to me, the biggest shift that I've had in my life, professionally and personally, is that, is that simple phrase, so that we can. Mm -hmm. Because so that we can is why should you care? It's the answer to why we should care. So can I just add one other thing about a great name? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't try to create an acronym too early. <laughs> There is a community on a different platform. So right there, right there, it hurts me, <laughs> hurts me. But they have named, the, the, I get an email from them that is CLI. I shouldn't even say that because that's probably mean that uh, like somebody is like listening to this because again, they probably want to be a billion dollar creator and I just called them out. But I don't remember what it stands for. <laughs> They are in my inbox every morning, and I don't remember what it stands for. When you're thinking about a name, this is again, Rachel, I love your, your brand, because it's, it's, there's a purpose behind it. Yes. Even convert kit. It's kit that it makes me convert people so that they do stuff. Don't try to change it. Don't, don't try to change it. Too soon. It. So, 
So I just, it's one of these things about so that we can gets us out of our own head, gets us out of our own story, gets us out of like, let me tell you all the amazing things about this supplement because it has magnesium and somebody is like, what's magnesium again? I think that's great. Versus like, I'm going to, I'm going to put you in a group of people that are having the absolute best sleep of their lives. And you know what they're doing when they have the absolute best sleep of their lives? They also talk about it, but also they're more witty. They're more charming. They come up with better ideas. They are active and engaged and people like them more. Because you know what people don't like? Is when you show up on four hours of sleep, mm -hmm. And you're an asshole. Correct. <laughs> Nobody likes that. Which person. I am if I only have four hours of sleep. It's true. <laughs> it's, it's this simple shift. <laughs> See, it's very relatable. <laughs> what we, so we call the members of our club schmillionaires. Um, and that word comes from, Cardi B was the first person I heard say it. She, she recorded this video saying, I'm a schmillionaire. And I'm like, oh, I love that. Um, and I think if you're gonna name something, right, name it like, it should be aspirational. Like, what do people want to accomplish? Where do they want to go? And name it that, right? So I call my, you know, members schmillionaires. And actually, if I remember correctly, I might have said this a couple times, and then they nominated this as their name. Um, and it's Schmillies for sure, right? But like, I, I call them Schmillionaires even if they're not a millionaire yet, right? Because they're on their way to that. Um, so it's like, focus on the aspirational part of it, right? Because if you talk about like, um, you know, if you call, like if you talk about not getting sleep, that's depressing and sad. Nobody wants to be associated with that. But if you focus on, you know, best sleep ever or whatever, you know, sleep heroes, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> um, that's where people want to go, and so they want to be associated with that. There's something in there about identity that's yes. a really important thing in community. Seth Godin has this line where he talks about the best communities are formed around one, like one phrase. People like us do things like this, right? And so you get to describe what people like us is, mm -hmm. you know, and then what do we do? Right, this is how we operate. And, so and I would add that last piece, so that we can. Okay. So that we can, so I think it's three pieces. It's who do you bring together, so that's people like us. Yep. Two, these are things that we do, so that we can. And it, it cause the way a brain works is they're listening, they, all of us, we're always listening for those three things. Is this relevant to me? Yes, no. Can I vividly and viscerally feel what the thing is? That's the, that two line. And then, so what? What do we get for it? What's in it for me? And when you make that hot shit sexy, <laughs> you can attract anyone to a community and they show up excited to build those relationships with each other. I think this is it, one of the things that's, that's really interesting. The, the absolute best communities very quickly get to what is the identity of the member. Mm -hmm. And so you've done that beautifully, beautifully. And it's one of these things where the faster that you can, again, start with your members. What are they able to do a year from now that they're not able to do today? And what is an identity that, that, again, captures that motivation? That's where the magic happens. Who are maybe one or two other examples of creators who are building something on a much bigger scale than they normally would because of using community as a throughput? Yeah, I'll give, I'll give a, 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 an example. Um, Nancy Anderson is a celebrity trainer, half a million followers. And could have turned that into sort of the same type of celebrity training business that you've seen from lots of other celebrity trainers, actually created something different, which is called the Birth Recovery Center. And the Birth Recovery Center is digital, and it is about how are you, you know, preparing for birth, and how are you recovering from it? 
it is an incredibly successful business. Why? Because it's not just about Nancy Anderson, it's about what it is for. And the name is super clear. Again, you kind of know who it's for, you probably know what you're gonna do together, and the so that we can is also really clear all through the name alone. And I, I think that that is such a powerful uh, example because she has built an eight-figure business and growing rapidly by really starting not with her following or her personal brand, but what the member is going to get from being a part of that community. I love that. So good. And another example that comes to mind on somebody who's great at building community is Pinky Cole, who um, is based in Atlanta. She has a restaurant called Slutty Vegan. She had one restaurant, um, and now she has several, and there's always a line out the door, regularly. Like, they're, they're always posting videos. She has about half a million followers as well. But one of the things that's, I think, unique about her is that she is not just doing social media like kind of being outward facing, like posting stuff, you know, and just talking about herself and not really sharing anything else. She's using her platform to always be engaging with her audience. And so she'll ask them questions, ask them what they need. She'll, you know, give them things, right? Do giveaways and things like that. She, what she's said in the past is that, she, I don't know if she's still doing this, I hope she's not, but <laughs> she responds to every DM. But the thing that's most interesting, so Slutty Vegan is her like first business, or like not her first business, but it's the business that she's most known for. Valued at 100 million, uh, like last year. It's probably already worth more than that. But she has a second business that she created called American Sesh. And the idea behind it is you have a sponsor, so she gets like a corporate sponsor to sponsor this experience. She gets celebrities in the room through like her network and her relationships. And then she has regular creators who are just part of her community. And the, the way that you get in is you just raise your hand and say you wanna be in. And then she DMs you a blue couch emoji. That's like, that's how you know you're in, right? And so it's that's like, awesome. yeah, so it's a small group of community where like regular folks get to meet a, you know, celebrities, and then they're sharing their businesses and their ideas, and they're masterminding with them. So she's there, these celebrities are there. And so the way that she's taking this to the next, because I'm like, what's your plan with this, right? This is interesting, but it's also doesn't seem scalable. But here's what I think she's doing, I don't know for sure, but I know she's posted recently with like the head of Netflix, so she's, and she's talked about, like hinted at that she has a TV show coming. I think the TV show is American Sesh. I think she's going to like create these situations and then put them out like as episodes of a TV show. Um, but just such a genius idea and such a way to serve her audience to say, I have this dope network and I'm gonna bring this network to you. And I think I, that's such a great idea. Yeah, it's like a great way to create that community and it's a, she gives back in major ways and I think yeah. that's, that's how she's building community. I, you know, one other thing, just as you were sharing that example that I think is a super important thing to also keep in mind um, about kind of the moment that we're in, which is if I, if there's one thing that I could leave you all with, it's things that seem hard are getting radically easier and will continue to get radically easier. So, you know, one of the things I was just reflecting on that, that you know, the way that Mighty has evolved is to be able to um, support a creator or an entrepreneur or a brand who wants to do a lot of different things, to have a portfolio of programs, of subscriptions or memberships and courses and events and live streaming and physical product and part of the reason that I think for any of these brands it's so important is because as each of these things get radically easier to do, you have the ability to do more of them. So for example, that seven day challenge can then turn into an impossible membership. And that impossible membership probably could break down into different challenges or quests 
that happen in whether it's different workshops or different trainings. And then obviously there's a certification in running those kinds of quests, those kinds of trainings or challenges. And in the past, you used to have to do these in 14 different places, in 17 different ways. You had to have a big team to do them. And what, what you know, I, I see so clearly from my little perch in Silicon Valley is that software is going to increasingly make all of these things smoother, more natural, easier, where members are able to help each other to be able to do more of these things. And the power of that billion dollar creator is understanding that value journey from the first time they learn about you, the reason they show up, and then taking them through that value journey as people are able to really connect in smaller groups in more conscious and intentional ways to what? Achieve results and transformation that none of us can get on our own.